A really quick way to create multiple reports based off of your project for the web data is to connect to a Project BI template. And once we've connected our project to this Power BI template, all of our project information is going to be imported into the template. And we're going to have numerous different reports visualizing our project data in different ways already created for us. We won't have had to lift a finger. So this is really cool and I'm really excited to show you how to do this because it's not particularly obvious and it is a little bit of a fiddly process. Now, the first thing we need to do here is we need to find where the Power BI templates are stored. So we're going to open up a brand new browser. So all you want to do here is type in use Power BI desktop to connect with your project data. Let's hit enter to run that search. And it's this link that you want here, the one that links through to the Microsoft support site. So let's click to open this link. And this is going to take us to a page that gives us a little bit of information about connecting Power BI to your project data. So it's definitely worth having a little read through this. But if we scroll down, it's going to take us to a section where it says set up your Power BI desktop. Now, remember, you're going to want to make sure that you have Power BI installed on your PC or you have a subscription for it before you begin this process. Once you do have Power BI installed, this is the link that we want, Project Power BI Templates. So let's click on this to open. Now, this is going to take you through to a GitHub page where we have various different things that we can download. As I said, this is a little bit of a complex process and it's not particularly obvious. Now, the one that we want is fairly obvious project for the web. So let's click to open this up. And we're looking for the template file. Now we have a little bit of information here about the template, but this is the one that we want. Microsoft Project for the Web Power BI template.pbit. So let's click to open this link. And once we get to this page just here, this is where we're going to find the download link. So when we click on download, it's going to download that project for the web Power BI template. Now, this is going to go to your downloads folder unless you've redirected your downloads to go somewhere else. Now, I'm just going to click on open file and now Power BI is going to open. So I have Power BI desktop on my PC, which is exactly what it's trying to open this template file in. Now, check out what it's asking us for here. It's asking us for our Dataverse URL. If you recall, a couple of lessons ago, we were speaking about the Dataverse as the place where all of our data is held. So basically, it's saying here, tell me where your project data is so that I can import it into the template and create the visualizations. So how do we find out where our Dataverse URL is? Well, to grab that, we need to go back to Microsoft 365. So from the home page, we're going to go back to our app launcher and we're going to open up Power Apps. So we want to stay on this home page and we're going to scroll all the way down and we're looking for our project data. So right at the bottom, I have a section called Your Apps and there is Project. So I'm going to click on Project. I'm going to verify the email address that I'm using and my password so I can sign in. You might have to authenticate yourself using the Authenticator app. But once you get through to this My Active Projects page, your Dataverse URL is what you can see up here in the URL bar. And it's this part just here. So it finishes with .com. So this is what we need. We're going to Control C to copy it. And then we're going to go back to Power BI. So now we're back here, we can paste in our Dataverse URL, control V, and then click the load button. And that is going to create a connection to our project data. And depending on how many projects you have, this can take a few minutes, but it's currently looking at all of my data, importing the different projects, the project buckets, the tasks, the teams, so on and so forth. And you can see we have loads of different things that's importing just here. So what we're essentially doing here is we're creating a connection to our project data. And this isn't a connection to any specific project that we have. It's a connection to all of our projects. Now, obviously, we don't have to analyze 
and create visualizations for every single project that we have, we can use various things like filters to just pull out the information that we need. But in the first instance, when you do this, your report is going to be based off of every single project that you have. So now you can see that it's starting to download the information from Project for the Web and pull it into Power BI. And the cool thing about this is because we're creating a connection, if we were then to go into project for the web tomorrow, create a new project, add new tasks, in order to pull all of that new information into the report, we can just come into Power BI, click the refresh button to refresh the connection. So it's really nice and simple once you've established this connection. So here comes all of my data and check this out. Look at all the information that we have here. Notice at the bottom, we have all of these different tabs. It's created multiple different reports based off of our project data. Now, the first one here is the portfolio dashboard. So this is giving us an overview of all of our projects. And just before I did this, I actually went through and tidied up my projects. I had a lot of test projects in there, things like that. So we still have our final wedding plan and employee onboarding, but I also added a couple of other projects just based off of templates and called them Project Alpha and Project Delta marketing campaign, just so that we've got something in here to look at. So this is pretty amazing. I get an overview of all of my projects. I have four current projects. It's shown me the effort, the effort completed, the effort remaining. I can see a donut chart that shows me tasks that are in progress and not started. I've got a column chart that shows me the effort by project and a pie chart that shows me projects by project manager. Now that one's not particularly meaningful because I'm the only project manager. We then have a little table at the bottom, which shows me basic information about my different projects, the start and finish times, the progress, the effort, the overdue tasks, so on and so forth. And I have some filters at the top so I can click the drop down and I can filter by project progress and also by project manager, which currently I'm the only one in there. Now, of course, this is a template that we're using, but we can customize it and switch out different things. So if we wanted to change the types of charts we were using, we could do that. If we wanted to change the drop downs that we see our filters, we can do that as well. But as a basic starting point, this is a great template to use. And if we have a brief look at some of these other pages that we have. Here we can see a portfolio timeline. We can see our portfolio milestones. I don't actually have any milestones in my projects. I can see my roadmap key dates. So I added some key dates into my roadmap, which if you recall was called Deb's projects. I can see those there with some visualizations. I've got my roadmap details in here and I've got a resource dashboard so I can see all of my tasks broken down by who they're assigned to. And there's so much information that I have in here. I've got resource assignments. I can take a look at my specific timeline. So just tasks that are assigned to me. So, so many different visualizations that have been created all in one go without me having to lift a finger. And you might find that this is enough for you. Maybe you just want to save this off as a report and present that to your manager. And that is absolutely fine. But what I'm going to show you over the next section is how we can basically customize these reports and how we can build our own custom reports from scratch with our own cards, our own charts, our own tables. And that's going to help us understand the basics of how Power BI works as well. So the final thing left to do here is just very quickly save this report by going up to file and save as. And I'm going to save this into the course files folder so that you can download it and take a look at it yourself if you want to. I'm just going to call this project overview report. Click on save and we are done. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.